What's up everybody and welcome back. So we're going to dive into Photoshop today and I'm going to show you how to do a, a technique that I use quite a lot um, whenever I'm doing sort of album artwork or concept art and that is the glow effect. So what the glow effect is, is isolating uh, an object or something within the image and basically giving it a color and making it look like it's glowing, such as in this image here, we have the briefcase which has been had this effect applied to it. And it's also about painting the light around there. So you cannot just create the glow effect itself on one object. You need to consider the surrounding object which include where is that light going to hit on the floor, on the tree, on the subject. Do we need to make the subject stand out more against the background? And as an added little treat, just throwing in some elements too, to basically take this photo from here over to looking like that. So let's get into it. So if we look at the final thing we're going for compared to the original, then it's obviously this looks like it's been taken during the day. So we need to change that to night. We need to isolate the suitcase here and give it that glow effect. And then we also need to look at painting some light. Just to add a little bit more mystery on as well, we're going to bring in some smoke. So the first thing I will always do then is actually make a copy of this layer. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to put those two together. Uh, I just get in a habit of always making a copy of my base layer just in case I really screw things up along the lines, I know I've got my original to work with there. So I make a copy and I'm going to pull apart this briefcase as well by going over to the selection tool, quick select tool, and I'm just going to pull around that. Now I may not be going for perfect, but do make sure you take some time with this. Zoom in, you can use the option key to always remove some. So say I go a little bit too far like that, I can hold down my option key and I can paint back over that to try and select what I want. Once I'm happy with that, I can then make a new mask or if I'm extremely happy, I can just copy and paste that layer there as so. But I could also do this as a mask. For this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste it across. Now, before I go any further, we've isolated our subject there of the briefcase, that's what we're gonna do with the glow effect, but we need to turn this into night. So how do we turn this into night then? I can go over it and spend some time doing some different photos, or I can simply go over the top of this and do a color lookup. I can then go through the different LUTs that are loaded in here and find one that basically suits nighttime. Moonlight's usually quite a nice one to work with, so if I apply that over the top, boom, looks like it's at night. Now, this may be too much, so I can go over here to my opacity and I can bring that down to a more reasonable level. I can't remember exactly what I had it set on before, but now it's starting to look like we have a night. Okay, so now I've got that looking more like night. I'm going to duplicate uh, this sort of briefcase layer there and pull this above. And I'm going to convert this to a smart object, right click and convert. I'm not too worried about the color because I'm going to fix that later on. What my aim is here is now to start to get that glow effect. So I'm also going to change this across now to a linear dodge. Again, that is brightening things up a bit more, but I'm going to go up to the filter top here, down to blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to start off small around five for this one, duplicate the layer, go back into the blur on it, and I'm going to increase this one to about 20. Duplicate the layer one last time, and then I'm going to pull this one right the way up here. And you can see the more I go up, the more I get that sort of outline of the glow coming around the briefcase there. So I don't want it to look too unnatural, as in really far up. I want it to just look like it's glowing from the center and you've got this little bit of a glow coming around the outside. So that's looking nice around there. And you can't always get this from effect from the same thing. So you see as we build up those layers, that glow really starts to come out from it. If I take away any one of these layers, then we lose an aspect of that glow. Once I've got the three of those uh, together there, then I can group all of that together by selecting all of my layers, right click and group layers. And we'll just go with group one for the moment. So now that I've got that, I need to change the color of my briefcase uh, to whatever I want to match the scene I'm going for here. Originally we had a very blue tone going on, so I'm gonna copy the same thing, create a hue and saturation layer to go with that. And I really want this to pop. So what I'm gonna do is go down to click colorize. I'm gonna just level the saturation back to zero. I'm sorry, not zero, 50 there. And then I can drag all of this along, but we can see it's affecting everything. So I need to clip this just to the group, the briefcase that we've got. And I'm gonna pull that along until I get that nice sort of turquoise, not even a turquoise blue, it's just a light blue. 
and then boost the saturation on that and you can see we really get that nice glow effect. Okay, so briefcase is looking pretty good, but I think we can still get a little bit more of a glow around this. So I'm actually gonna go back into my group here and I'm gonna make a new layer, which is um, just basically going to paint over the top and just create that little bit more glow around the briefcase. And this is a similar technique we're gonna do when we go around the outskirts of the tree as well. So at the very top of my layers here, I'm gonna create a new one. And this is simply just gonna be taking a brush and just going very soft with a round brush. I'm going to bring the flow right the way down as well. And I'm just going to put it over the top of the briefcase there. Like that. Now again, this is a bit too bright, so I'm going to change the blending mode of this down to a soft light. And again, the opacity I'm going to bring down as well, just to get that looking a bit more natural. So again, depending on how much of a glow you want, you can pull this up and down. That just gives you a bit more freedom as you're editing to come back to this and not have to worry about going through all those different layers again. So I'm going to leave that at that for the moment because that's looking pretty nice. Okay, so now we need to address what this new light source that we've introduced into the image is actually going to be hitting. So we've got the glow effect, that's great, but we need to make it seem more realistic. So that's looking at where would this light bounce off of. Here we're definitely going to have the floor a little bit up onto the woman here and then basically around this tree, but maybe not at the top of the tree, probably just sort of tucking underneath. So to do that then we need to go above our hue and saturation layer here and I'm going to create a new layer. And for this one, I'm going to keep with my sort of soft brush, but I might just bring the flow down a bit more so I have more control on making some areas a bit brighter than others. I don't want to go in with 100% on this. Uh, and as a color look, I'm going to select one of the colors from the briefcase so I know I've got a similar light source. And then I'm simply just going to paint where I think that light's going to hit. So it's gonna go all the way around there like that. And probably want it going up onto the trees a little bit more. And what we'll do is we'll circle it all the way around there. Maybe not as much on this side. So I might just bring my brush down a bit even more so and do a lighter brush there. Where it's gonna be the heaviest, I'm gonna re-go over and this just gives me a bit more control. Now at the minute that still looks terrible, so we need to go over and we need to change the blending mode of that. So I wanna go over here and I wanna change this to color dodge. And I find you get the best results here if you don't necessarily play with the opacity, but you can try playing along with the fill instead. So if I bring the fill of that down, you can see we get that nice glow and I'm gonna try and match a similar glow that's coming off the briefcase. So this is too little, this is too much. So I'm finding something in between. Now I could repeat this process if I maybe wanted certain areas like a little bit brighter so I could make another layer on top of this and uh, like repaint into different places again. But I might just see how the rest of the image editing goes first before I try any of that. Okay, so next I want to bring in some more elements and I do this a lot when I'm dealing with like fantasy type based artwork. So I'm gonna bring in some sort of smoke and dust particles. So if I copy this in here and lay that over, I'm gonna change this to screen and it's obviously very overwhelming at the moment so probably what i'm going to do is just make a layer mask of this and i'm going to remove some of it where i just don't want anything else to sit so i don't want as much sort of over the woman there and i'm just going to very softly go over these areas now I don't have to use a soft brush. Again, if I'm probably in detail, I'd probably take a different type of brush with this. I'd probably take one that was um, like a cloud-based or smoke-based brush just to blend it in a little bit better. But for the sake of time today, we'll just do that. And don't forget, I can come over here and reduce this overall to make it look just like a bit more of a natural smoke in the air. Finally then, because I'm introducing a new element over the top here, I kind of want this uh, like blue glow to go around into the smoke as well. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new solid color layer and I'm going to lay this over the top and it's already picked up the same color I had before when I selected from the briefcase. So that's fine. We'll go with that. And what we'll do then is clip that down below. So we just want it to affect the smoke that we've put over the top of this then to so create clipping mask. Uh, and again, I can bring this right the way down to whatever I want. But first of all, I just want to change that as well down to a soft light. 
And the aim here is just to make any sort of elements that I bring in still match that blue light that's going on there. Final sort of touches then, and this is just to control the light once again. It's not all about just putting this glow effect in, it's about making it believable around. So we've changed it over to like a bit more of a night mode, but this is still, the light feels a bit off on this. So what I would do is create some, um, do some dodging and burning, and I can do this with the dodge and burn tool, I can do this with curves, or I can just do it with the brightness and the contrast. So if I just go for brightness and contrast, I'm going to bring the brightness right the way down. I'm simply going to go over with a soft sort of brush and paint in these sort of darker areas that we've got in the image. Almost giving it like a little vignette around the sides there. There we go. Again, I'm being very sort of rushed with that, but it's just darkening down any bits of the image. It's pulling my eye into the middle where that glow is going to be. That light's not really going to hit above the branch there. So I'm going to pull that in. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but go the opposite direction. So I'll bring in a brightness and contrast. I'm going to brighten the image this time. And I'm just going to paint over any sort of areas where we would have that light coming in. So around the tree there, on the ground, on the subjects, around this area here. Not so much the background behind though. And again, being very, very sort of quick with this. The great thing about this is you can always go in afterwards and you can, even once you've done the mask, sort of bring this up and down to find the right level that you have with that there. Um, but let's keep it for that. And the very last touch that I probably want to do is just select my subject and just make them pop that very last little bit more. So I'll go over there, select my subject. I could use the subject select tool as well here, actually. I don't have to just do it like this. Um, but let's get that in. There we go create a new layer with that in and uh, then yeah I'll do some color curves some anything I want really just try and make that subject pop out a bit more like that and I might just put brightness and contrast over the top There we go then, very rough and obviously lost some details on top of there. But the point is to make your subject stand out a bit more as well. So different ways to go about that. Obviously you could throw this into Lightroom, you can do some work in there if you want as well. But the purpose of what we've done here is create the glow effects on uh, the suitcase. So you can do this on any sort of item or anything that you've got. Uh, within your photo, but then you need to consider where that light source is around. So we've gone on top of our group and then we've painted in the same colored light by selecting the color in here and looking at where that light's going to hit, painting that back in and then going around that image and sort of reducing the brightness and contrast, just doing that dodge and burning, really trying to make the scene like as believable as possible from a light source. So when you do go back to that original photo, it looks drastically different. So I hope you enjoyed that. I really love doing these kind of light edits um, just because it's not meant to be believable. So you can really put your imagination to use of uh, what could you do to tweak this and just, just make this image stand out. It's a good way to use photos sometimes if you're not really sure what the purpose of this photo is. Say you've gone out and you've taken a load and you know you like the looks of it, but just doing sort of a standard edit isn't good enough. See if you can incorporate it into a piece of artwork or sort of a concept piece. So never just like throw away or delete your photos. I have so many raw photos that I've not used in the past and then I kind of look through them when I'm doing different projects and I'll actually pull them out and use, it might be the whole thing, it might be the background, it might be an element. It's just my own stock library of images. So never get rid of photos just because you're not sure they would make a good print. You can always do so many different things to them to turn them into something special. So I hope you liked this one. Please do like, comment, and subscribe below. I'm going to have a massive mixture of videos still coming out soon. Thanks for your support so far, and I'll see you in the next one.